Hey guys, Jeff Schneider here, and in today's video, I'm going to get really specific. We're going to talk about the blues, and specifically the fourth bar of the blues. I'm going to tell you what you can play in that bar so that it sounds really good. Now, of course, this isn't the only thing you can play in the fourth bar of the blues, but it is a technique that works well, super effective. So first, I'm going to play it on the saxophone, and maybe you'll hear what it is I'm doing on the fourth bar, but either way, I'm going to explain it, so here we go. This is uh, B flat blues, and I'll just count it off here. One, two, three, four. Okay, here's another example. And one more example. Okay, so did anybody figure it out? What was it that I did in the fourth measure? Well, here's the, here's the trick. Here's the little secret. I withheld the dominant seventh of that B flat seven chord, the A flat. Remember, we're in the key of B flat here, B flat blues. So I didn't play the A flat until the fourth bar. I withheld it. And what that does is it makes the A flat much more impactful when you actually do play it. So I save it till the fourth bar, right before we go to the four chord, right before we go to E flat seven. So right before we go to that four chord, that's when I play the dominant seven, that's when I play the A flat on the B flat seven chord. I'll do it one more time, check it out. it'll lead really nicely into the E flat 7 chord. You can even resolve that A flat, which is the 7th of B flat 7, down to the 3rd of E flat 7, which is G. So that last line I played, it was something like this. And then I can resolve that A flat down to the G. Okay, I'm going to do one more example, putting it all together. I'll go into the four chord a little bit more this time so you can hear how it all resolves and, and fits really nicely. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And so on. Now this isn't a hard fast rule that you have to do every time you get to the fourth measure of the blues, but what it does do is that it indicates when there's a change about to occur, meaning we're going to go from the, the one chord to the four chord. Because that dominant seven, that A flat on the B flat chord, on the B flat seven chord, it creates more tension that is begging to be resolved. The A flat really wants to go down to the G. You guys get it? Let me know if you have questions or comments about this. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Schneider. Today's topic is about how to play or solo over a one chord vamp or jam. Oftentimes when you're playing a pop or a funk tune, you'll just have like a B flat seven chord for X number of bars. And after a while you can Find yourself running out of ideas of what to play. Or you just feel like whatever you're playing just sounds boring and it's the same thing over and over again.